Hello. Today we have our last assembly in the series on David. We'll begin with a bit of a recap and see what you can remember. Quiz time. Here are some questions about everything we've done over the last few assemblies. Let's see how much you can remember about David. You might remember that David had lots of brothers, but where was David in his family? Was he the oldest, in the middle, or was he the youngest? He was the youngest. As well as looking after sheep, David also made music and played an instrument. Which instrument did he play? Was it the trumpet, the harp, or the drum? David played the harp. Can you remember the story about David killing Goliath? Did David kill Goliath because he was super strong and brave? or because he was confident he could do it, or because he was trusting God to help him. David was trusting God to help him. What was David's best friend called? Was it Jonathan, Peter or Daniel? Yes, it was Jonathan. Do you remember when David could have killed King Saul, but he didn't? So what did he cut off that belonged to King Saul instead of killing him? Was it his hair? Was it a piece of his robe? Or was it his sandal? was a piece of his robe. When David became king, which city became his headquarters? Was it London, Paris or Jerusalem? Jerusalem became David's capital city. David showed kindness to Mephibosheth what was his problem? Was it he couldn't walk, he couldn't see, or he couldn't hear? Yes, that's right. He couldn't walk. How did you get on? Did you get seven out of seven correct? We have seen that David was a great king and a great leader. He was chosen by God to do some wonderful things. But still, he was an ordinary human being. And he made lots of mistakes too, didn't he? Just like all of us. There are many verses in the Bible which give us clues and hints about how great David would be through all generations and how his name would be known for years and years to come, right up until today. We're going to have a look at some of those verses and passages from the Bible together now. Psalm 89. The Lord said, I have promised my servant David, a descendant of yours will always be king. I will preserve your family line forever. 2 Samuel chapter 7 When you die and are buried with your ancestors, I will make one of your sons king and will keep his kingdom strong. You will always have descendants and I will make your kingdom last forever. Jeremiah 23 The Lord says, the time is coming when I will choose a king, a righteous descendant of David. 
he will be called the Lord our salvation. Isaiah chapter 9 A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and he will be our ruler. He will rule as King David's successor, basing his power on right and justice from now until the end of time. Have you ever tried to investigate your family tree? To find out what you know about people who lived in your family many, many years before you were born. The Bible tells us that David was an ancestor of Jesus. That means that many hundreds of years before Jesus was born, David was in the same family. Let's have a look at that. This looks a bit complicated, but it's a kind of a diagram of Jesus's family tree. On the left, we have King David there, who was king around a thousand years before Jesus was born. And then above King David, we trace the family all the way through to Mary, Jesus's mum. You can see that on the right hand side. Below King David, we trace the family line all the way to Joseph, Jesus' earthly dad. You can see that towards the bottom. How important this is, that King David was in the family line for Mary and Joseph, and of course, Jesus. Some of our famous Christmas carols remind us of the importance of David. You may have heard one of them that begins once in Royal David's city stood a lowly cattle shed. David's city, that was Bethlehem. Perhaps you've heard a part of Wild Shepherds Washed. And one of the verses goes, to you in David's town this day is born of David's line. In other words, Jesus born into David's family in David's town of Bethlehem. There are many, many references to David throughout the Bible. And this just reminds us how the whole Bible fits together, how God had a plan for his world and his people from the very beginning, and how David was an important part in that plan. In order to discover why Jesus was born, we must travel thousands of years into the past to a time when God's people, the Israelites, were in the promised land. The Israelites were constantly disobeying God. Sin was rampant in Israel. One day, God sent a prophet to warn the Israelites about their disobedience. A prophet was a person who told people on earth what God wanted them to hear. One day, a prophet named Isaiah came to remind the Israelites of the coming of God's Savior. He said, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. The zeal of the Lord Almighty tells us this. Even though Isaiah warned them, the Israelites still disobeyed God. So God sent another prophet. His name was Micah. His message to the Israelites was, You, Bethlehem, are one of the smallest towns in Judah, but from you will come one who will rule Israel for me. He comes from very old times, from days long ago. God knows that when we disobey the rules he set up, we usually hurt ourselves or others. God sent all these prophets to tell the Israelites just that. Nearly all of these prophets also spoke of a coming savior, one who would take away their disobedience and sin. And perhaps you are an important part in that plan too. People who are Christians carry on the good news of Jesus. Their names may not be in the Bible. They may never be famous. Perhaps people will never have heard of them. But Christians believe that we are all part of God's story and that he calls us to follow him 
and to share that good news with others. David wasn't a perfect person, and certainly we aren't perfect either. But all of us can be part of God's family. The Big Question! For Think about everything we've discovered about David. What have you enjoyed learning? What do you think it might help us to understand? It's been great sharing all these stories of David with you. Let's finish with a prayer. Father God, we do thank you for all that we have learnt and discovered about David. Thank you that you had a perfect plan and that Jesus would be the ultimate part of this plan. Thank you for our families, the people that care for us, the people that have gone before and the people that will come after. Help us to play our part and to do whatever it is that you plan for us to do. Amen.